Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again in our little character selection project in the Unreal Engine. In our previous episode, we've made quite some strides, making our character be able to walk around. And in this episode, I'd like to take a look at the menu, particularly two aspects of it. Currently, when I press Alt, the menu just pops in. That is one thing. So I'd like to make sure I make that a bit more subtle and instead of make it pop in, I might just fade that in over a second, half a second. We might play with both values so that it looks a bit swisher than just, you know, popping into place. Then the other thing is that uh, our players might not realize that they can probably click on any of these buttons to change their character into a different person. But what they might not realize is that they can also press the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 to change the outfit of the character and 5, 6 and 7 to change the skin tone of the character. So I'd like to add a little description message above the menu so that they know what they need to do. So I think this episode should be dedicated to making that happen. There's one other thing that I haven't actually tested. You just trusted me that this is going to work. And um, of course, we could never trust somebody who tells you things on YouTube. Uh, what happens is that I couldn't quite see this until I rewatched my footage back here. When we play this and the menu comes up, the quit button is often hidden slash always hidden by my camera. So you can't actually see that it's there, but it is there. And we haven't even try it out if it actually works so maybe we should we should start there uh, click that button and it does work so it what the in the editor if you play this in the editor the quit button will just throw you back to the editor much like what would happen if you press the escape button but if it's a packaged project the quit button would then actually close the project down and and you know finish off the project literally as if you were to click that little x icon in the top right of an application. That's the equivalent of what would happen. If you do this, the application would stop and, you know, players have a good experience. Let's give them an even better experience by animating this menu in. Just a quick recap of how I actually bring that menu up. So first of all, it is here. This is a, a blueprint widget. This is the menu. And what we're doing to make it show is that on the character, I believe in the in the there's these two little functions here show menu and hide menu they bring up the menu and really what we're doing there is we're setting the visibility property on the menu that's a boolean property i believe it's actually an enum um, as i as i'm being informed by unreal engine here it can't really be animated it can just be set to visible or hidden so that's that's really the only thing i can do there i can't animate this i have to come up with a different way of replacing this node in hide menu, we're doing the reverse. We're doing the exact opposite. We're setting the menu to hidden again. And another thing that we need to remember is that in my first graph here in menu shenanigans, I've called it under event begin play, I'm actually creating a reference to the menu and I'm storing that as a property here. And then I'm also setting it to hidden. So those are the places where the menu visibility is affected. And this is also how I'm bringing up the menu and adding it to the viewport here. So let's go and animate our menu then, keeping all these things in mind. It is happening with this thing here, the big green button on the bottom right. That's bottom left. Sorry, that's the animation button. So when I click that, I can create myself a new animation, give it a meaningful name, and then I can call that animation from wherever I want. So in our case, the character. Shall we call it fade menu? Mustn't contain a space. So fade the menu. I might just call it that. Fade the menu. That's a good animation title. And this is just the name that I need to extract from the menu so that I can play this animation and refer to it. To actually make something happen inside that animation, I need to create a track inside of it. Before I click that button hastily, which I could do, I need to have a think about what object in my scene I'd like to actually animate. So in my case, that's the horizontal box, the whole thing I'd like to animate. But I could just as well animate any property or any object that is in my menu. So I could animate this one button or in fact the image on that button. So those are the things I just need to have a quick think about. What is it that I'd like to animate to make my life a little bit easier? In my case, it's the whole horizontal box here. So I'll select that and then I head over and click that track button. If I don't do that, Unreal Engine will not give me this convenient option that says, hey, you want to create a track probably animating that horizontal box. And now I can just go select it. I can access any of the widgets with my huge 
drop down menu here that says all named widgets and I can select one here, but it's just so much easier if I just select it beforehand. So it is indeed correct. I want to animate, I want to create a track animating my horizontal box and Unreal Engine says, that's cool. Let's do that. Here's my track. But we need something else, namely another track inside the track to tell Unreal Engine what properties of this horizontal box we'd like to animate. So if I click that, I get another half scary menu that says, hey, do you want to animate the pivot point is enabled or the cursor or the clipping or the visibility or what, what is it, the transform? What is it that you'd like to do? And in my case, I would like to fade the menu. So that is a good way to do that is with the render opacity. Transform would be if I wanted to move the menu or animate its size properties or its share properties. Visibility, I don't know if I can actually animate that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I've never tried. I'm going to stick with the render opacity. So I'm going to click that. So just to recap then, this is now that that gives us the actual track with keyframes on the timeline that lets me add values at specific points in the timeline. So just to recap, create an animation, call it something, then create a track inside that animation for the object you'd like to animate. And then inside that track, create another track that now lets us animate the properties of that object. So I could add other things, which we will in fact do, namely the description menu. We'll come to that in a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and notice that the current render opacity is one at the beginning of our timeline. And Pick a place like maybe a second, maybe a second is a bit, let's, let's try a second. I don't think it's, it, maybe a second is a bit too slow. Might use half a second, might use a second. I might, I might use half a second. I might use a second. Okay, let's use, let's use a second. That makes it very visible what we're doing. With our playhead on one second, which is kind of the end point of our animation now, I can go and click that tiny little icon in between the two arrows here, which says add a new key at the current time. I can also press enter, I guess, but you know, that little thing will set another keyframe. And now we have two keyframes. I could also just change the value of any of the properties that I'm animating. That'll also set a keyframe. So now if you're familiar with animations, this is now going to interpolate between the first keyframe and the second keyframe. Currently, they're exactly the same, but what I'd like to do is have the render opacity at the beginning of my animation, not one, but zero. And if I do that, set that to zero, my menu disappears. So opacity means shows up. If something's opaque, you see it. If something's transparent, which is the opposite of opacity, then it's transparent. But an opacity of zero is transparency. And an opacity of one or 100% means it is fully visible. So what we're doing, zero to one means our animation, our menu gets animated in or gets faded in and looks super, super beautiful. That's, that's really all there's to it. That's how we animate the menu. Well, that's how we use the fade portion of the menu animation. Uh, to cue this, I can now go and remember this name here, fade the menu, and go back to my Cinti character and replace the logic in all the things that affect the menu. So first of all, where I'm setting the menu in event begin play, I'd like for it to be visible from the beginning. So I'm not going to hide it when we bring the menu up. I'm going to make it visible so that the animation can take a, take care of bringing it in and out of vision. I could also remove this node here, but I'm just going to leave it in place and just set the menu to visible. That's here under the menu shenanigans. If, you, if you've been following along, this is a new event graph. And wherever you create the menu, event begin play, make sure the menu is visible at the start of the project. Then in show menu, that is a function that we've created that actually brings up the menu. I'm going to remove the set visibility node altogether and instead drag out from my selection menu a node that is called play animation. And there's several flavors of this here. It's play animation, play animation forward, and play animation reverse. You can see where I'm going with this. So play animation forward means play the animation from start to finish so that the menu is faded in. But when we want to bring it out, we can use the other node, which is just doing the same thing, reversing it, thereby making it invisible again. Isn't that exciting? I think that these, these things are just this very elegant design. I really like that about Unreal Engine. So let's pop that node into the graph here. And this node not only needs a 
target, which is the selection menu, it also needs the actual animation that we want to queue. And if you look into this drop down here, you can see that there's nothing in here. Uh, that's uh, because we need to grab that animation out of our selection menu. So I'll just go drag that over here. And then from here, I'll say, uh, I'll go get fade the menu. That's our animation. And that is what I'm going to pop into here so that this node knows which animation actually to play. And that should now fade in our menu. I can also change the play speed here. So if I find this is a bit too slow here, the fade over one second, I might go and uh, just change the animation value in the play animation thing if I wanted to. But we'll come to that in a minute. Let's go have a look at the hide menu function next and do the exact opposite here. So also get rid of the visibility node that previously set our menu to hidden, drag out of our selection menu and say, uh, fade the menu. That's the one. Oops, sorry, that is actually, that's not what I meant. I meant to go and say, this is a target to, this is a reference to our animation. I meant to say, uh, play animation. There we go. Play animation reverse. This is what I was looking for. Hey, all's well, that ends well. We needed both anyway, so it's not a problem. I might go and move that, I don't know, maybe over here. Is that pretty? I don't know, it's not, not, not pretty enough. And then this here goes into here. That might, I might just go and make that look pretty, prettier. Okay, put that here, put these two guys over here. I enjoy a little mini game from time to time. There we go, put that here and then this can go here. I hope that makes it kind of clear what we're doing. Grab a reference to our selection menu and play an animation on our selection menu. Let's see if it works. And don't be surprised if it doesn't, because I believe we have forgotten we have forgotten something. One or more blueprints has an unresolved compiler error. Are you sure you want to play this in the editor? No, actually. What is the blueprint failed to compile Sinti character? What is the problem there then? Should have just hit the compile button. Fade the menu. Why? What's what's the, what's the matter here? You don't want to do that. Let's go drag you out again. Fade the menu. Put that into the animation we want to play in reverse. Compile. There. All is well. Sometimes Unreal Engine isn't happy with when you drag things out. It should have been in a different order or whatnot. Anyway. So there we go. Our menu is visible from the beginning. So we'll deal with that in a moment. The moment I hit the Alt button, watch what happens. The menu kind of goes away and is faded in. That's nice. Press Alt again and the menu is gradually faded out. So now we have this, this exact motion that we, that we wanted to fade the menu in and out. But like I suspected, one second is a little bit, is a little bit slow. So I might leave it on the fade out to be one second, but on the fade in, I like for that to be a little bit more snappy. So yeah, let's let's take care of that. And of course, the issue that the menu just sits there doing nothing when we actually don't really want to see it. So that is caused by by something that is you know equally exciting. Let's go and fix the animation speed first under show menu. If I go and set the playback speed to two, haha, see what happens next. Play menu is of course there. Menu now fades in slow, but fades in much faster. That's kind of cool. Fades in snappy, disappears rather slowly. I'm loving it already. Good stuff. And as it's fading out, I can already run, run around with my character. So that is also something I really like. There, swish. But start playing and the menu just lurks around. It should be invisible, shouldn't it? That's the kind of player experience I'm looking for. What's happened there? Well, it turns out that on the selection menu, in the animation, the moment I'm selecting an animation, the track, the kind of the timeline track, will take care of interpolating anything that's animated, including, you know, in my case, the render opacity on frame zero. But really, if I'm selecting off that animation, so if I if I don't select it, if I go and click into this gray empty portion of the animations menu, then I'll see that my menu is in fact still here. And that is kind of expected behavior because the render opacity right now is set to one, which is the default 
value that this has and only when an animation is being played or controlled that is when these menus that, that is when these values are actually being overwritten so i need to go and select off the menu here and then set the render opacity for the default of the menu to zero off the horizontal box here so this now means that when I bring up the menu with my with my event begin play on the player character, it means that it isn't showing. Its render opacity is set to zero. And that now means that if I go and start this thing, press the Alt button, it should now, yeah, there we go, the menu isn't visible. The moment I press Alt, the menu then is being made visible. There we go. So that is how we fade that in and out. This is exciting. Tell you what, let's leave it here. Let's quit this for this part of the series and come back in the next part in which we're going to add that little description text above the menu that lets players choose the, or let, that, that informs players about the choice of outfits and skin tone. So I'm going to split that out into another video because, you know, this one's getting on a bit already. So join me for that in the next part.